Welcome to the presentation today. I'm Jason Jacob from Intelligis. Um, we develop uh, system software for manufacturing. In this presentation today, I'll be talking about manufacturing execution system M or MES. Um, and essentially, it is a methodology whereby we collect data from everywhere on the line and uh, give uh, management the ability to do reporting and to uh, get visibility into all areas of manufacturing. It is not a control mechanism, it is only a, a reporting and uh, whatever mechanism. So, first of all, um, we need to ask yourself some questions. Um, if you can answer these questions all and your business is taking care of it, then I guess you either, either have a MES system already or um, you uh, are a manufacturing facility that doesn't really require it. So the first questions under downtime are how much and when. So if your line goes down, your production goes down, do you have a way of identifying why? and historically to look at uh, when it happened and to do some analysis and do some um, kaizening or um, making the process better. Uh, can you determine who is causing it, uh, what is causing it, perhaps equipment, perhaps um, material, product, and what is the ultimate cost of that downtime? For performance, um, are you aware of what all of the machinery or the lines and equipment um, at what rates that they can actually run are certified to run at and it, can you determine if they were running at the below capacity are they running slower than what they're designed to run at and uh, if they are running lower than, that, than what they're designed to be what labor costs are associated with those losses for production um, are you able to understand exactly how many raw materials go into creating your product and your cost associated with that? Do you have visibility into the processes um, that are running out of spec? So perhaps um, a heater or a spindle is, a, perhaps a heater is running too hot and thus causing quality um, problems or running not hot enough and again causing quality problems. Are you able to identify that? Are you able to, to view and report on it historically and look at trends? Um, how much waste are you producing? How much uh, could you have produced had you uh, not had losses in this area? In terms of quality, um, are you able to determine what process in the workflow that a particular defect should be responsible to? I mean, what is the source of the, the defect? Um, do you have a system that gives you proactive notifications when metrics are out of spec and which will ultimately cause quality problems? Um, and so you can react quickly to uh, reduce the amount of waste or um, bad product that's produced. Do you have um, uh, manually audited data or tracked data or, or is it automated? And uh, do you have enough information from your system to provide uh, a methodology for you to make improvements on the line? So a study was conducted um, by Mesa and they uh, included 150 manufacturers and they found that there is a clear relationship between the use of MES and improvements in business results. And in fact, co companies using MES were significantly more likely um, to report annual increases in performance. And we can see from this chart here that in various areas of the manufacturing um, that there was a significant improvement over those that uh, did not have an MES system. So the primary benefits, uh, we create more accountability for um, operators and, and management. We reduce the downtime by allowing us to be, to flag it, to be able to view what types of downfine times instead of in, in terms of top end and Pareto charts and so on, so that uh, improvements can be made. It improves the efficiency. We understand, uh, you know, with the reporting, we understand when machines are running below um, what their capacity is. 
um, and thus increasing production. Uh, we can improve our quality by identifying uh, pinch points or areas within the process that uh, where bad quality is being introduced. And ultimately, we improve the bottom line by creating more profit as all of these areas are um, uh, waste and losses are, are eliminated and reduced. Secondary benefits, um, we see a lot more visibility, um, especially into the amount of labor that's being spent and the loss due to that labor, um, perhaps non-performing due to downtime or so on. We have detailed SPC reporting, which ensures that um, products are reduced or produced within specification and we can identify products when they are not. Long-term storage, so we can analyze the data and uh, trending. Um, integration with plant systems and stand using standards, um, open standards. Um, we provide monitoring and centralized control. We reduce waste, rework, and scrap. Um, including quicker setup times. So we can identify when setup times are too long and um, so that they can be investigated and reduced. More accurate capture of cost information, better visibility and decision making. Um, ultimately when you have all of these uh, reports and metrics coming out you can are better armed to make management decisions and improve uh, and, and creating and driving improvement activities. Um, and you can capture your costs more effectively. Uh, obviously, uh, the yield will increase and the throughput as um, improvements are made. Um, a lot of the manual data entry and auditing which is happening uh, will be eliminated and uh, automated and allow for better analysis. Um, improvement in schedule adherence, better inventory management, enhanced regulatory compliance. So for those of you who are ISO compliant, um, you, uh, with the, the historical, uh, the ability to do reporting to, to, to ensure that you're compliant um, with all your products. So the metric uh, used by MES and in manufacturing is OEE. And essentially it's the, it measures how effectively time is used to produce a quality product. All facets of time. And so uh, time in respect to availability, performance, and quality, all of these uh, multiplied together give us our OEE value. So if we were to take an operating, a plant uh, with operating time, the time that the lights are actually on in the building, so not including any shutdown activities, and then uh, you know, summer shutdown or, or where the plant's dark, of that, only a subset will be planned production time. Um, because we will have some planned shout time in terms of um, lunches, breaks, and so on. Of that subset, that would be considered our operating time. So anything that wasn't planned downtime. Now, there's always going to be introduced, due to low availability, downtime, uh, there will be some losses introduced. That is, uh, determined, that is uh, essentially your availability metric. Of that subset, that would be your net operating time and of course with net operating time um, not all machines will run 100% of their capability therefore you will be introducing some speed losses and therefore we've got a performance metric from that. Of that subset um, we have a fully productive our fully productive time. Of that fully productive time we are going to introduce there will be in any manufacturing process some quality losses um, perhaps we're running uh, too quick or um, at various places within the line uh, we'll have some some quality and defects introduced therefore we have a metric there when all that is combined and calculated we now have a profitable time where the total amount of time where we have a good quality product that can actually be sold to a customer So those three areas, uh, availability, performance, and quality, have their own uh, losses. So there are essentially six losses, two in each area. So uh, quality problems that would uh, happen at startup, once the line is running, there's going to be some obviously some rejects um, produced. And then if the line's not running optimally to the highest speed possible, then we're going to have speed losses. Sometimes there's minor stops due to maybe uh, 
operators not being able to keep up with production, so there'll be some minor stop losses to catch up. Uh, obviously, there's going to be some breakdown losses, and sometimes there's external unplanned losses due to for perhaps you do just in time uh, delivery of products, and there's a delay of some sort. And then of course, uh, the total loss, we do need to account for any um, paid planned downtime, so downtime where you're paying employees but there is nothing being produced. And of course, unpaid downtime, um, where you've got downtime where you could be producing but there is no pay because maybe you sent them home early. So the total time and uh, the opportunity here to, um, to, to reduce your losses by analyzing our efficiency, utilization, and asset utilization. So we need some data in order to create, to do all this reporting, do analysis. So efficiency data, we need to determine uh, the downtime. So all the lines and all the processes that can have downtime, we need to identify what types of downtime are happening at any given time and their durations. Uh, productivity data, we need to understand and somehow um, capture the, the the, the speed and the, the counters of how many goods, scrap, rework, etc. Um, our quality data is derived from the processes, so the temperature, pressure, tension, thickness, and, and, and so on uh, of the product as it goes through the line. Um, we attach identifiers to that so we understand what lot numbers and what work orders and serial numbers and batches that all of this data is to be associated with. And then, of course, we have setup data, which would be the um, the mins, max, the tolerances, the specifications for all of the areas of uh, the production line. So, once all that data is acquired, we can begin to visualize um, through various mediums. So, abnormality tracking, uh, through dashboards, business dashboards for management. Uh, and executives, real-time views of the actual data in columnar format, historical reports and trends, and then uh, benchmarking so we can create a baseline from our historical report and compare against baseline. So as we look at the overall OEE, um, we have we can start building some dashboards and, and reporting. So here's an example of multiple lines in a, in a manufacturing plant and we're showing our, our OEE overall, and then they've broken down by availability, quality, and production. Um, other dashboards, we can include some extra information in uh, terms of availability. So as you click on different items and drill down, you can see uh, the OEE for by day, by shift, by equipment, uh, by work order as well. And if you are, if you actually uh, drill down to, um, or if you record uh, the employees and who's on the line, the operators at the time, we can actually show you uh, OEE summary by employee to see their effectiveness. All of this, uh, these reports are driven by summary data, which are calculated in the system, and then that summary data is uh, created from the actual events and data that's being collected on the line, so the very lowest level detail. For the o availability portion of the OEE, we can see the, uh, the downtime and the history to see um, what type of downtime, faults, and so on. We can drill down uh, a little more to view what type of downtime, and of course in Pareto format and top end, we see which were the highest um, uh, contributors to downtime, which allows um, management to, to, to do investigations and to work on improving those areas. And then of course we see the summary data, which is uh, fueling or, or providing data for these reports, and the actual lowest level detail data of start, stop times, durations, and, and the status of that downtime. For the performance portion of OEE, we see um, the total numbers produced, our planned, our actuals. Um, we see where we're at in terms of total produced for the day, if we're behind, if we're ahead. Um, we can actually see down to the process level and uh, at any given time we're sampling it uh, every second or so on and comparing that against the mins and the max so we can see whether we're within tolerance uh, to, to see whether we're going to be affecting the quality of the product. 
Um, we can set targets on days, uh, month to dates, and years to dates in terms of uh, the percentage uh, the, that we want to get, the, uh, the total products uh, to be developed, to be uh, manufactured. And of course, we can set targets for how much scrap and, and uh, the efficiencies and so on. From that, once the targets are set, we can show uh, we can compare our actual numbers to our plan numbers and see how we're doing in, in meeting our our, uh, our targets, our, our KPIs. We can also track a mean time to repair and mean time to break fix for maintenance and so on. For the quality portion of the OEE, um, we can view the produced, the losses, and of course calculate uh, quality on that. Um, when we see the quality is low, we want to investigate and drill down. We can actually look at the uh, sampled data uh, per second, or or if it's an audit process where they're doing auditing on materials, we can see uh, the plots and how they fall. So that we do SPC reporting to show um, the the upper limits and the lower limits, and see where um, how your quality is affected through um, adhering to the specifications. Uh, we show the specs, if it's out of spec or out of control, we show those rules that are being broken and uh, to help you identify quickly as you look at the chart. We show distribution as well, so you can quickly see whether you're within tolerance or leaning towards um, uh, above tolerance or below tolerance. Detailed SPC information with CPK and everything is provided as well. And we drill down even farther, we can actually see the detailed data that uh, generates these SBC reporting. It can be exported and analyzed in Excel or however your engineers wish to do so. So to implement such a strategy in your organization, there needs to be some stakeholders involved in the process. Uh, obviously engineering, they need to be involved in the design and implementation. They're key to making sure that we're collecting data from equipment and that we're upgrading equipment into uh, so that it is capable of being collected in a uniform way. Production um, needs to provide their inputs in terms of use reports and the end product. Maintenance, uh, they would use the product to, to determine if the equipment is working with intolerance, so they need to be involved in the decision process and analy analyzation process. Finance obviously needs to input on pricing of costs uh, for production, so they can set baselines. And then IT needs to be involved um, to approve the system architecture, and make sure that uh, the, the, the uh, infrastructure is in place to support um, such a um, large project. Project phases are essentially two. The first one is a scoping study where we come on site we have those meetings with all of the stakeholders. Um, we identify who the stakeholders are. We provide uh, high-level design, infrastructure assessment, uh, full bill of materials, what's required to get up to par in order to, to analyze or to, uh, to collect the data. We provide deployment plans, cost analysis, resource requirements, specifications, and identify any customization areas or any areas where manual data could be uh, automated to reduce waste in terms of labor. The phase two of the project is actually the execution phase. So the phase one, we give you a quote on exactly what it's going to cost to implement. Phase two is a detailed design, project plan, any custom development that need to be created, uh, any integration, implementation, commissioning, training, documentation, configuration, uh, everything to make sure that the, the project is fully implemented and, and realizes the reporting and visualization that's needed by management. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to, uh, to chat or send an email and we can provide you with any extra information you need. And I invite you to have us back to start phase one to implement an MES system in your company. Thank you.